Good afternoon, everyone. I am Joe Flick with the Montana State Library. I'm your CE coordinator, and I'm here with two of my colleagues, Pam and Suzanne, who are going to walk us through some of more information uh, about how to navigate and do stuff in Aspen. Go ahead. We're doing stuff in Aspen, it's true. Today's session is updating your personal information, which is a fun thing to do, and it's good if you can keep it current. So um, as you can see, I am here on the Aspen page, and you just want to navigate to the mslservices.mt.gov slash Aspen page. I should have talked about how um, the best way to get to it, but I didn't, I'm sorry. I'm hoping by now everybody has this page bookmarked somewhere. But when you're on this page, you click the nice big login over here on the right hand column. And you're going to have to click several times. So just get used to clicking. I've had people complain about how many clicks does it take to get into Aspen. So you're logging in ePass. If you're not a state employee, um, you're going to log in ePass Montana on the left hand box. Since I'm a state employee, I'm logging with my state employee account on the right hand box. You put in your username and password. I should have actually, let me go back. Um, if you don't have an Aspen account yet, then and you can create one in this left hand box right here on the link and you'll fill out a username a password your usual fill out things to join groups to register in accounts so if you don't have one yet you'll need to do that once you do then you can log into to um, aspen with your username and password and you can have a sip of water while it authenticates you and then you come into what looks like the same page again although now on the left on the right hand side it says welcome it will say pam henley for me it will say you um, when you log in from this page what you want to do is go to aspen admin over here on the right hand side once you click that it comes up with your own admin page in this nice gray box. So this is where um, I wrote my nice little handout a while ago and it was accurate and now things have changed just slightly. Originally I had said under the gray box is update your personal information. That's gone away. It went away just this week. At least that's when I noticed that it went away. So my handout is a little bit wrong. What you're going to want to do is click on the edit person under you. If you don't have a picture here, you'll be able to add a picture. I think if you don't have a picture, don't you have just like a little gray box, a little, um, everybody I think else? you just have one of those little, a know, little question mark or one a little, of those little silhouette. Figures. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah a little, little... it's a little ghost figure. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if you don't have a picture, you're just going to have that little image in the box. So under that, you click on edit person and image and that takes you to your page because you are a person and it is your page. So you'll just make sure that your name is correct, your title, the library you work at, everything displays publicly. You can put in your phone number, your email, your mailing address, whatever you need to change. And once you've done that, you would click the save button, of course. If you scroll down farther on that page, then this is where you can put in an image. If I wanted to change my image, I could replace it here. I could remove it if I decide I don't want to have one, but I like to have an image in there. It's, it's something prettier than that little silhouette. And underneath you can scroll down and do some more specialties. If you're really good at something, um, you can select a specialty. I didn't select anything here. I did. I'm okay at uh, training and staff development and strategic planning. And I guess I think I'm proficient in Aspen. That might be a stretch. And farther down, you, you better can... be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Someone is, of course, trying to call me right when I'm trying to present. That's terrible. So then underneath that, you can choose professional organizations. If you are a Montana Library Association member, um, you can select that. And that is down in the pull down box. 
with the menu here and you can add it that way. And scroll down, scroll. Down. The tricky thing is once you have done some of those, you need to come back up to the save button on this page, even though it's in the middle and you've done things on the bottom. That's how you update your information. You can go right back to Aspen Admin on the right hand side to get back to that page again. So the next thing you want to look at is edit position underneath all of your information here. And when you edit position, now you get, oh, that's the difference between person and position. A person can have several positions and a position can be held by several people. It's a little bit confusing sometimes, but this is where your position you can edit and you may have more than one position in the library world. This is another one where you scroll down. You have your position title. And anything with a little red dot a red asterisk next to it is a required field. So you'll want to make sure you have those. Um, I may have to come back in and edit my begin date because really it was a little sooner than that. If your phone number changes, as mine has at one point, you can update that. It's going to be very similar to probably your library information that you had in your person page. But if not, you can change things here. We do have a field for hourly wage, but I don't know if anyone's really filled that in. Of course, if you change things, you want to save again. And then farther down. Let me just add um, hourly yes. wage is not publicly available right. information, right? Right. That's Thanks. correct. Yeah. And I guess when this one doesn't explain it, sometimes these little information buttons that are next to it are very helpful. Um, but this one doesn't say if it's, it doesn't say it's not publicly displayed. I wish it did because then people would know. Um, an hourly wage, does it say? It doesn't say. So I think, I'm not sure where that hourly wage information goes if we're using it for anything. There was a time when it was. When we put that these, one? this is Joe speaking, when we put the um, this page together, I do remember that there was quite a discussion about how much mm -hmm. information we wanted to make allow people to enter mm -hmm. and um and that was just seemed like one that someday you know we we might ask every you know we might be able to get um harvest that data to do something good with it mm -hmm. you know like improve wages for for librarians so yeah that's yeah. the intention of it and it and, and, and i think at this point we haven't really pushed people to enter that data right so there isn't it there isn't really a lot of reliable data here but down the road we might use it yeah there are things in here that someday might be used and honestly i don't know much about the responsibilities section here are we using this um i think it's things you might be associated with or in charge of or have something to do with it honestly, again yeah that, i haven't I, done it i don't think at this point um, no. that has actually been most this is most of the stuff has actually been um, right and it's not a required field so I wouldn't worry about that one myself I wanted to get back to hourly wage for oh, a yes. second because I know you know we get asked for that information quite often you know and people are asking you know what's you know what you know their board wants to know what this position is getting in other libraries and that can be really hard information to you know to gather um, you know, we get it from statistics, kind of, but that's pretty vague. And so, right. I mean, I can see the value to it because, um, you know, people want to, you know, if they're looking for a raise, they'd like to be able to make the case that, you know, other people in that same position are getting more money. So, you know, it's like. Yeah, yeah. I almost feel like somewhere in the public library statistics that is some information that does come out, but we're not really putting it in there and we have no way to to come up with numbers. So it would be nice if we could use that field a little bit more. That's really the quick overview of editing um, your person's information and your position information. 
And I'll pop in here again too, in that, um, you know, it's worth, I know it seems like it's really redundant, but it's worth looking and making sure that the information is the same in both of those because, um, you know, it can be different. And I know, you know, we recently, Pam and I recently, you know, changed our phone numbers and, you know, we lost our eight, lost, gave up our 800 numbers. We let go you know? of our 800 number. <laughs> and, you know, and so, you know, we needed to check and make sure that those 800 numbers were not, you know, still locked in position fields or somebody would, you know, call up the record in a different way. Mm-hmm. And then they'd be calling us at numbers. And with 800 numbers, you never know who you're going to get right. the other end of that. So it could have been yes. really, you know, Goodness. really embarrassing. So, um, you know, so go and look. And I also recently you know, ran across uh, somebody who had like two different positions, like the same position listed in there. So, you know, if you call up your record and you see that you, you have two positions and you really should only have one, mm-hmm. um, it's worth checking and following up on. And, you know, that ended up being something that Chuck had to fix. But, um, you know, cause these records can get, you know, a little bit messed up at times, especially, you know, other people take over and they start adding their own stuff to be helpful. And then you come in and um, so, you know, it's worth looking and making sure that everything in there is accurate. Right. Especially- I bet everybody is looking at going to be looking at their right now yeah. record <laughs> yeah. in Aspen. I hope so. so we hope yeah and yeah. we want to see pictures for all of you guys of people so we can look and say oh yes yeah, someday we will be in person again so it's nice to have a face to say I have seen this person before I know who that person is um, and I think directors can do some updates of their staff people when when positions in your library change um, you want to make sure you keep those current too. The right person is in the position. Something else to keep in mind. That that is exactly the topic of of our next session on updating that organization information and individuals in your organization. Ah, so, wonderful! Amelia Especially will be covering that in a couple fabulous. weeks. Fabulous! Yeah. Great. So my question for people is. Um, is it confusing that these are the two links, the edit person and the edit position are what you're going to be using rather than in my handout where it says update underneath the gray box, which has gone away. I need to revise my handout. I've made that decision and I'll do it. Does anybody have any other questions? Yeah. Or does somebody else want to do their um, editing and we can guide you along if you want to. This is Joey from Whitefish. Hi, Joey. (laughs) Take my mask off so you can hear me. Um, When you're editing your personal information, can you change your name? Um, I put it in the chat box. When I log in, it welcomes J-O-A-Y. And I think it did that because when we set this up, my first name was Joe. My middle initial was A, so it comes up J O A Y. So I, I'm assuming that it. Oh yeah. Oh, where is that? Because there was somewhere. Because as you can see here, um, over here on the right hand side, it says "Welcome, Pam Henley," and yet my name is in here as Pamela. Somewhere there was a place to put you know, like, I don't know, nickname something, and I didn't see it in here. Do either of you guys remember where that was? Why is mine saying welcome Pam Henley when it has my name as Pam? Oh, nickname is down here. I don't have a nickname in here. That's kind of funny. Yeah. This is where you put nickname. That's a mystery to me. It's gone away. <laughs> Another thing has changed. How can how does, that be? How, how does it know that you're Pam <laughs> instead of Pamela? That you got me on that yeah. one. Yeah, because there is a nickname. But Joey, to answer your question, I would think in here you could fix your name and take out if something. Yeah. If it looks weird, that's where I would be fixing it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll give it a try. Okay. You, you should Thanks. be able to do it yourself. And yes. anything you can't figure out or don't want to bother with, you can open a help ticket and Chuck will do it for you. Very so, good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, that's really, and I'm sorry I didn't see your, your uh, question in the chat box. Um, so, but thanks for jumping in there. No problem. 
so Pam, should I stop our recording now or? I think so. I don't have anything else to show. All right. This is pretty simple stuff. Thank you for, if you're watching the recording, go ahead and claim your credit um, for today. But since it is a pretty short tutorial, you better go in and change something in your personal record to get that first, that whole half credit. Okay. <laughs> Yes. All right. At least go and check on it. Make yeah. sure everything's okay. Exactly. Do that now while we're listening in case you're, you find something and say, oh my gosh, help me.